Existed. It goes against everything Manifest Destiny teaches about Native Americans. And I want you to know this part of our history because people erased it, and we'll get to that later on in the program. Erased it intentionally. Erased it intentionally. That's an important part of it. America's history didn't begin with Christopher Columbus came over. There were ancient cities with advanced architectures all across North America. Did you know that? Hundreds of years before Columbus came, you guys think, oh, and the Indians, they didn't scar the land. It's a, no, no, not true. These were cities as large as any in the world at the time. London or Rome, they were metropolises. Archaeologists say they have found evidence of 200,000 actual cities of mound-like structures all across North America that were here long before Columbus. But we don't know anything about them. Why? Why? Most Americans have no idea that ancient cities with advanced architectures once dotted the ancient North American landscape. Director Kennedy has since coined a name for such places. What I call hidden cities. I use the term because these were very big places. There were more people, we now know, in Cahokia, across from St. Louis, than there were in London or Rome. For, for more than 50 years, evidence of humans in America much older than 13,400 years ago was simply dismissed, and anybody who attempted to go that way would not get research funding and would be ostracized by their colleagues and, and literally have their, have their lives ruined. And, and this is most unfortunate, and it's not how science should proceed, because we now know that human beings have been in the Americas for tens of thousands of years before 13,400 years ago. In fact, the latest evidence puts them back more than 130,000 years in the Americas. And what that says to me is if they were saying before that humans didn't come until 13,400 years ago and nobody should look, nobody should dig deeper, now we know they were there 130,000 years ago. That's more than 100,000 years of the American story that has not been told entirely because of the dogmatism of archaeology. And now reluctantly they're having to accept. All of the institutions are accepting. Well, we're sorry, we got it wrong. But some who authored the very first publications of the Smithsonian or the earliest books on North American antiquities described and illustrated things that would surprise most of us today. Some people, such as uh, Caleb Atwater and uh, Squire and Davis, they believe the artifacts that they were finding that were on these mounds and uh, cities and, and earthen structures, that this was representative of an advanced civilization. This is the very first publication of the Smithsonian Institution. This is the work that Squire and Davis were able to complete in the late 1830s, the early 1840s, in what's called the Ohio Territory, which primarily worked in the state of Ohio, showing the monuments and the vast cities and the greatness that they must have had. some of the sites that they surveyed and the maps that they made as our only knowledge these sites even existed now because they were destroyed or uh, they were intruded upon and their original configurations were greatly altered. The real question is, why were these sites not preserved? And why are these advanced civilizations not more commonly known of today? So uh, I'm going to read from uh, this book. It's called The Ancient Mystic Oriental Masonry. It's teachings, rules, laws, present usages, which govern the order of the present day. All right, so in this book, just wanted to show a couple of things here to correlate what we've been learning about the true old world. So it says, we are not indebted to either ancient Egypt for either religion or masonry. 
but to America. Um, but it says we are not indebted to either ancient Egypt for, for either religion or masonry, but to America. It is a fact that at Memphis, Egypt, in pyramids, in the pyramids, under the guidance of the kings of the mystic rites of masonry, were worked many thousands of years ago. But at that time, Egypt and the continent of America were one and the same. It says, in America, rediscovered in the 15th century and repopulated in the 17th, was recovered Egypt and the promised land. All right? Egypt and the promised land. The promised land, right? Atlantis. Called Atlantis, the antediluvian world by Ignatius Donnelly. This was uh, from New York, Harper and Brothers, Franklin Square in 1882. That Atlantis was the region where man first rose from a state of barbarism to civilization. Also, point four, he says that it became in the course of ages a populous and mighty nation from whose overflow in the shores of the Gulf of Mexico, the Mississippi River, the Amazon, the Pacific coast of South America, all the way to the Pacific coast of South America, and what's there? Peru, right? The Mediterranean, the west coast of Europe and Africa, the Baltic, the Black Sea, and the Caspian were populated by civilized nations. Point A, that the oldest colony formed by the Atlanteans was probably in Egypt whose civilization was a reproduction of that of the Atlantic islands, that the implements of the Bronze Age of Europe were derived from Atlantis. And if you know about the Michigan mines, you'll see that a lot of the Bronze Age metal that the Greeks and Romans used was coming from America, being mined up there. You can research that. All right? And it continues says the Atlanteans were also the first manufacturers of iron. Point 10, that the Phoenician alphabet, parent of all European alphabets, was derived from an Atlantis alphabet, which was also conveyed from Atlantis to the Mayas of Central America. Those parts of America over which it ruled were, as we will show thereafter, Central America, Peru, and the Valley of the Mississippi, occupied by the Mount Builders. All right? Moreover, he tells us that this vast power was gathered into one, that is to say, from Egypt to Peru, it was one consolidated empire. It was called uh, Civilization and the Ancient Egyptians by Katanga A. Bongo. The idea that it was Europeans who introduced civilization to Africa is one of the biggest historical myths. In fact, evidence from archaeology, oral history, Traditional languages and cultural practices strongly indicate that it was the South American Indians. Again, <laughs> the South American Indians who introduced civilization to Africa. Who introduced civilization to Africa? According to this researcher, South American Indians. Some 7,000 years ago. Long before the Greek and Roman civilizations emerged, the South American Indians had introduced civilization to Africa, thereby making Africa the second continent in the world to become civilized. Spurred on by their South American Indian guests, the Africans built great empires that lasted for several thousand years at a time. Contrary to popular myth, in the Western world, the advent of Europeans destroyed civilization in Africa rather than made it from the scholarly journal the foreign quarterly review volume 18 published in london in 1837 so again this is mostly a, a recount of an expedition done in 1805 1806 1807 by um this guy named dupax and his team a french uh, team all right so we're just gonna belly flop to this part right here it says we have said that this is an inquiry almost new to the public we can adduce an extraordinary instance of the ignorance prevailing among literary and scientific men in general of the immense sources of information from which they have been excluded all right this information has not been available to a lot of scholars all right by the voluminous uh, pedantry employed upon the subject it was after the publication of lord kingborough's work that is to say in 1831 that a correspondent of the Literary Gazette announced a great discovery by a certain Colonel Galindo 
in New Spain, this gent around now. Remember, New Spain, they're talking about that whole area of, uh, you know, Mexico, Mesoamerica, a little bit of the Southwest U.S., right? And in you know, Florida, you know, this gentleman, it says, going out one fine morning in the neighborhood of Palenque, stumbled on the ruins of an ancient city, nearly as wonderful in the architectural details of those of Egyptian thieves as wonderful in the architectural details of those of Egyptian thieves. So is this the original thieves? I want you to take a look at this. This is going to blow your mind. See this here. First, let me show you the Great Pyramid of Giza. You've seen this. One side of the Great Pyramid of Giza. If you measure it, it is from the bottom to the apex, 606 feet. That's important. That's an ancient unit of measurement. It's referred to as the stade. Now, I want to show you this. These are the Newark earthworks. They're here in Ohio. Yes, Ohio. The earthworks are made, uh, they're structures that um, are made now of earth that it has been built up from the ground in a perfect circle. Here it is, a perfect circle and a perfect octagon. But they were built by the ancient Hopewell civilization. They date back from 300 BC to 400 AD. So let's look at these structures here. Bring this up. I want to show you something. If you square the inside of the octagon, here's a square and here's a square. If you square it, this is what surveyors do when they're measuring, they square the circle and then they divide that area into four equal parts or cubes and then you find that each cube is made up of 606 feet, 606 feet, 606 feet, 606 feet, 606. It's made up of stades, exactly the same. Now, if that's not interesting enough, now, if that's not interesting enough, the first and strongest conviction, which will flash on the mind of every ripe antiquarian, while surveying the long series of Mex Mexican and Toltecan monuments, preserved in the various works to which we have briefly called attention, is the similarity which the ancient monuments of New Spain bear to the monumental records of ancient Egypt. Again, so their main purpose to write in this article, to do in this work, all right, is to show you, right, to show the antiquarian or somebody who likes history who actually researches this thing, these things, is to call to the attention the similarity which these ancient monuments of New Spain, right, Mexico, bear to the monumental records of ancient Egypt, all right? Similarity. Where is the true old world? While surveying them, the glance falls with familiar recognition on similar graduated pyramids, on similar marks of the same primeval Ophite worship, on vestiges of the same triune and solar deity on planispheres and temples which though characterized by some distinctions entirely american are not less worthy of the notice of the egyptian antiquarian all right so he's saying if you've studied the egyptian uh, archaeology relics uh, history then you would see automatically uh, basically the same things over here in Mexico. Strong uh, resemblances, similarity to the same history. All right. On relics, again, of palaces at once noble in their architecture and beautiful in their proportions and decorations. On monuments, sepulchral, domestic, religious, or warlike, which deserve the designation of Cyclopean as much as any that are now extant in Italy or Greece. On idols and sculptures, some of rude and some of Finnish workmanship, exhibiting different eras of civilization and often presenting the most striking analogy in posture and gesture to the monumental style of sculpture and of statu statuary preeminent called Egyptian. Lastly, the eye of the antiquarian cannot fail to be both attracted and fixed by evidences of the existence of two great branches of the hieroglyphical language both having striking affinities with the Egyptian and yet distinguished from it by characteristics perfectly American. One is the picture 
writing peculiar to the Mexicans, in which displays several striking traits of assimilation to the anaglyphs in the historical tablets of the Egyptian temples. The second is a pure hieroglyphical language, to which little attention has been hitherto called, which appears to have been peculiar to the Tultecans, or some still more ancient nation that preceded the Mexicans, which was as complete as the Egyptian in its double constituency of a symbolic and a phonetic alphabet, and which, as far as we can judge, appears to have rivaled the Egyptian in its completeness. Again, they're saying that this language, right, this hieroglyphical system, not only symbolic in pictures, but phonetic, it sounds like how Egyptians would sound, right? The, the phonetic alphabet of the Egyptian. And also appears to have rivaled the Egyptian in its completeness, while in some respects it excelled it in its regularity and beauty. So it excelled even more complex and beautiful than the Egyptian hieroglyphics, all right? Here's the thing we should be asking ourselves. I don't know the story of these. Do you know that? Did you know that? Do you live in Ohio and did you know that? Why not? There were tens of thousands of architectural consequences that are now hidden behind our junk and our architectural achievements. We now know that advanced ancient civilizations once inhabited North America, but have become lost to our modern memories, in part because of 19th century political and scientific agendas. When following the course of the constellations, those immovably and perpetually fastened upon America are reached, it will appear that while all that is sublime in the historic past centers upon Egypt, all that is sublime in the prehistoric past centers upon America, Atlantis, and as the curtain which has Herto concealed in prehistoric connection between the peoples of ancient Egypt and of America is lifted, it will be seen that the people of the eagle on the Nile being descended from the original people of the eagle on this continent. The twain are one in that prehistoric America was the original Egypt or eagle land prior to the mighty dispensation in the days of Peleg when the earth was divided and the great globe itself was nearly rent asunder. Again, that prehistoric America was the original Egypt, all right? The original Egypt was here in America. All right. A brief enumeration of a few facts will show upon what slight foundation Dr. Robertson must have built his careless appreciation of the monuments in New Spain. A mania existed in his time, as it does now, in favor of the stupendous importance of everything connected with the Egyptian monuments. Now, what is the simple fact? Pyramids, not inferior to Egyptian, exist in many parts of Mexican territories and of New Spain. And we can include, you know, all over the Americas. Thousands of pyramids. All over the, the whole, con all the continents of the Americas. All right. Some of these pyramids are of larger base than the Egyptian, larger base than the Egyptian, and composed of equally permanent materials or greater materials. We know UB2 News, you know, shout out to him for putting out that video showing us how it was all concrete. King Drop also showed that it was all uh, like the so-called Roman material or temples, right? It's not megalithic like in the Americas. Vestiges of noble architecture and sculpture are visible at Cholula, Otumba, Oaxaca, Mitlan, and Tlaxcola. The mountain of Texcoca or Texcosa is nearly covered with ruins of ancient buildings. The ancient town of Palenque exhibits not only excellent workmanship in the temples, palaces, private houses, and baths, but a boldness of design in the architect, as well as skill in the execution, which will not shrink from a comparison with the works of at least the earlier ages of Egyptian power, 
in the sanctuaries of Palenque are found sculptured representations of idols, which resemble the most ancient gods of Egypt and Syria. Again, in the sanctuaries of Palenque are found sculptured representations of idols, which resemble the most ancient gods of Egypt and of Syria. Palenspheres and zodiacs exist. Zodiacs, which exhibit a superior astronomical and chronological system to that which was possessed by the Egyptians. A superior, again, superior astronomical and chronological system to that which was possessed by the Egyptians. Let's not forget, this is from Harvard University Foreign Quarterly review have you ever heard of Louis Agassiz because as you can see here let me just zoom in a little bit right this is Louis Agassiz again geological sketches 1866 this version of it and we're gonna go right to basically it's right in the beginning almost and it says here contents page one Volume 1, America, the Old World. America, the Old World. Again, first born among the continents. First born among the continents. Though so much later in culture and civilization than some more recent birth, America, so far as her physical history is concerned, has been falsely denominated the New World. Again, has been falsely falsely denominated the new world this is not the new world this is the true old world hers was the first dry land lifted out of the waters hers the first shore washed by the ocean that enveloped all the earth beside and while europe listen to this while europe was represented only by islands rising here and there above the sea Oh, sorry about that. America already stretched in an unbroken line of land from Nova Scotia to the far west. Again, America, the old world. And I want you to know this part of our history because people erased it. And we'll get to that later on in the program. Erased it intentionally. Erased it intentionally. Why would uh, so many people be covering up the evidence of earlier civilizations in the Americas? I think some people have called it a colonial cover-up, a colonial archaeological conspiracy. There's two sides to this story. Uh, in, in one side of the story is the way America was conquered by basically Anglo-Saxons. Uh, and, and in that conquest of the, of the Americas, what they, what they confronted was an indigenous people who had inhabited that realm for tens of thousands of years, we now know. Uh, and the first thing they did was to attempt to exterminate them physically, to get them out of the way. And when that became objectionable, the next measure was to exterminate their culture, to rub it out, to pour scorn upon it, to say that it was of no value, that in a sense, the, the absurd and monstrous argument was that the Native Americans deserved what was done to them because they were supposedly not uh, not capable of any high culture. We now know that that's, that that's completely untrue. And that was a conspiracy. That was a conspiracy to destroy Native American culture and thus to, to legitimize the conquest and the massive theft of land. And it carried on into the 20th century with the so-called boarding schools where Native American children, almost all of them, were taken away from their families We've talked about hundreds of miles away and put in schools and, and, and taught that their culture was rubbish and indoctrinated with, 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 with Western We've actually talked about All right, so quickly I want to read from this uh, newspaper article that I found. Um, it was from the, it says here, the Kansas City Journal uh, from Monday, October the 12th, 1896. And the title is Prehistoric Man, the Human Race and Its Dispersions. How long has the earth been people and when and where was the beginning? All right. So we've been doing a lot of research, right? Correlating a lot of things that, uh, you know, America is the true old world. All right, more and more evidence is just going to keep coming out. We're just going to keep finding all these uh, investigations, studies, articles, uh, documented, recorded, uh, historical uh, chronicles um, and information, right, that existed that never was taught to us. All right. So this is one of those. All right. So let's see what they have to say uh, in this article. All right. Because we are talking about 
you know, a lot of Egyptian resemblances here in America. And the truth is that this is the source, this is their origins, and that's why there is some resemblances here to um, all the old world civilizations. You know, we have all that here. All right? It's not just like we're similar to Egyptians or we're similar to, to you know, the Hindu or all that. It's everything because this is the source. So from here, it's spread out to the rest of the world. All right. So let's see what they say right here. All right. So I'm just going to belly flop to this part of the article. And it says, after correlating all data that have been made public to the present time. All right. The conclusion is unavoidable that the oldest civilization was in the Yucatan and Central America. All right. Again, the Kansas City Journal in 1896 wrote this they're telling you that if you really do the research and you start compiling all this information all this evidence it's unavoidable all right that the oldest civilization was in the yucatan in central america future discoveries may change this conclusion it seems that egypt was first peopled by immigrants from the yucatan say what it seems that egypt was first peopled by the immigrants from yucatan space will allow only a few facts that clearly indicate the truth of this assertion first the pyramids of yucatan are some of them much larger than any found in egypt all right much larger than any found in egypt that of Cheops not accepted all right and giza second the pyramids of egypt bear structural evidence of having been modeled on those of yucatan notably of the one at Coloma, which covers 23 acres. Third, the early Egyptians and the Mayas of Yucatan had the same system of reckoning time, but the Mayas developed a system that was far superior. Again, we got that in the foreign quarterly review, right? Far superior or excelled, and which antedates that of Egypt is older than Egypt, all right? Fourth, the Mayas manufactured cement that was of the same material as that of ancient Egypt. Fifth, the architecture of Yucatan is of the same general type as that of an ancient Egypt, but it is finer and seems to have been the model that the Egyptians attempted to imitate. They attempted to imitate our models from here, America. Six, the art of both countries as displayed in their ceramics and architecture is of the same type or school that of Yucatan being much more highly developed all right again this was an article written in the Kansas City Journal Monday October 12 1896 if you want to look it up prehistoric man they're telling you straight up in this article back in 1896 that we were the source we were the cradle of civilization and we foreign quarterly review at Midland, there exists the remains of a palace, which is of considerable extent. Its architecture, though distinguished by characteristics peculiarly American and different from that of any nation with which we are familiar, is to our view marked by features of stately grandeur and mel melancholy beauty. The roof of the portico is supported by plain cylindrical columns not, no type of which we believe elsewhere exists it doesn't exist anywhere else the facade of the palace is covered with a beautiful mad work of basket scroll which is, is a characteristic ornament of all the Tultecan monuments which is often found in the sepulchral chambers of the same extraordinary people and which Rossellini, by a singular coincidence, found in those of Egypt, among others of the magnificent scroll ornaments, copies of which decorate his liberations. It is curious that the ground plan of this palace is the Egyptian Tao. Again, it is curious that the ground plan of this palace is the Egyptian Tao. All right the Egyptian Tau. Again, the T or the cross, the Tau, the Toph. It's Aboriginal, Paleo-Hebrew, one of the letters, right? The cross sticks. 
where energies intersect, a sacred place, a monument, the emblem of the Garden of Eden, the city of gold, X marks the spot, right? All right. Finally, statues sculptured in a purely classical style, unlike the rude deformities of Mexican art, have been found in the neighborhood of Otumba, Mitlan, Chochicalco, and the magnificent flower temple of Waxaca or Waka, right? Waka, Wakanda, sacred place. These are not the works of barbar barbarians, as Robertson intim intimates, all right? So these weren't barbarians building these. Having no metal implements to work with, this misconception is the result of the before mentioned confusion of two errors. And this confusion continues today. We got to break that. We got to really do research. Oh, wake up. Open mind. You got to prove your theories. You got to really research. All right? It is true that the Mexican semi barbarians produced their root sculptures with stone utensils. But the civilized people who preceded them worked with copper implements, some of which have been discovered in their tombs. There's two different kinds of people here. One with science, architecture, you know, math, civilization, and another one that came after that has just simple um, rude sculptures with stone utensils. Vases agree in both in shape and ornament with the earliest specimens of Egyptian and Asturian pottery have been found in their sepulchral excavations. Moreover, evidences of an amount of civilization and of social comfort which are not to be found among the popular and boosted monuments of Egypt are furnished by the architectural memorials of this great, singular, and almost unknown people. And they say that you are unknown, and they say that you disappeared, and they say that you came from Africa. All right, so again, this guy's just saying, you know, there's evidences of amount of civilization and social comfort which are not to be found among the popular and boasted monuments of Egypt. It just shows basically what you're saying. You're just seeing pyramids, but you're not seeing the whole town, the whole city. The roads are to be found not only in the vicinity of their great cities, but at considerable distance from them. Like I just said, all these ancient ruins are all connected by roads and highways in the middle of the jungle that's what they're realizing today this year they're letting us know and this book is from 1836 this article why didn't they teach us this in school who knows we might have become archaeologists we might have had an interest to dig into this stuff to our you know our own history and vast and, and magnificent and grandeur, you know, we would have probably been the archaeologists discovering and, 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 and writing about this today. All right. But we weren't given that chance. They told us everything was over there and that side over there. Again, roads are to be found not only in the vicinity of their great cities, but at considerable distance from them. Artificially constructed like the Roman military roads of large squared blocks of stone. These roads, on the same principle as the railroad, affect a continued level. They are, in fact, viaducts, as contrasted with aqueducts, which these people also constructed, where they traverse acclivities. They are parapeted, and the evidences both of regular posting stations at regular intervals and of the regular division of the distances upon the principle of our milestones upon turnpike roads are still to be observed. Bridges constructed of the same durable materials and traversing mountain torrents are also to be found. Where is all this in the so-called old world and the other side in Egypt? Cyclopean in the forms of their masonry, they are characterized throughout by the same titanium character of wild and exaggerated grandeur. Take the Mississippi Valley, 
civilization, which plays a, an important role uh, in this book. The famous sites are sites like Cahokia or Poverty Point or um, the, 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 the Ohio sites such as High Bank and Newark. Uh, amazing, you know, huge geometrical earthworks, absolutely stunning. But the trouble is that in the 18th and 19th and 20th centuries, there was massive large-scale destruction of these ancient monuments. <laughs> they were not considered to be worth preserving. The needs of agriculture and industry were more important. So what we can say is that around about 90% of the monuments that were in the Mississippi Valley in, say, 1700 are gone now. All right, so we're back in this journal again, the Kansas City Journal, Monday, October 12th, 1896, right? Prehistoric man, right? We're going to continue. All right, so he's saying that these, are, these facts are, there are literature, art, and sciences that have left their evidences in North America that are more ancient, all right? More ancient and more worthy of careful study than any of that afforded by either ancient Greece or Rome. The time will come, all right? Remember, this is written in 1896, October 12th, 1896. All right? All right? Now listen to what he's going to say right here. The time will come when a classical education will include this study. My people, it's right now. This is the class. All right, you don't have to go to no college, university. All right, the time will come, the time has come when we are basically including this in our studies that this is the true old world and you are the ancient one, the original, the so called antediluvian. So, again, you know, this was an article by Edwin Walters from the Kansas City Journal. October 12th, 1896, the Kansas City Journal, 1896, this is in page 6, if you're interested to go look that up, page 6, prehistoric man, the human race and its dispersions, alright, the Maya, civilized, the Africans, Asians and Europeans, foreign quarterly review. Now continue says, these facts being admitted or established, the question is, do the monuments of New Spain, as displayed in the illustrations of the works under review, correspond with three unvarying and un un identifying characteristics? Our reply is yes, they correspond entirely. Some of the pyramids, as we have said, are larger than those of Egypt. Some of them are different in their model having somewhat of an Indian character, bearing strong affinity to pyramidal temples still extant in Japan. And it says, see the works of Sir Thomas Raffles for that. The Pyramid of Cholula exhibits a most singular identity with the model of the temples of Belus. Okay, so again, the Pyramid of Cholula exhibits a most singularly identity with the model of the temples of Belus. Belus Jupiter, Bel, Tower of Babel, described by Herodotus, and which by many scholars has been considered to be the scriptural tower of Babel. All right. It consists of the eight graduated square towers, each rising above the other and terminating in a topmost sanctuary dedicated apparently to the same solar god but there are more singular analogies between the forms of some of the pyramids of New Spain and some of the most ancient pyramids of Egypt among the pyramids on the plain of Saqqara is one consisting of four graduated steps. The illustrations of the Antiquities Mexicanis furnish a copy of the Mexican pyramid of exactly the same form and nearly the same dimensions. So again, which one is the duplicate? 
they try to tell us that you know this is re that these these Aztec and Mayan temples are a lot sooner that they are not as old as the, the, the Egyptian uh, pyramids but we're crushing all this illusion all this hijack chronology wise history wise right so again the illustrations of the antiquities mexicanas and that's the book i told you this uh nine volume book by lord kingsborough you know it's available online just google it um you know it says it furnishes a copy of the mexican pyramid of exactly the same form and nearly the same dimensions as the one in egypt and the plain of sakari i look it up again descending galleries at a particular astronomical angle of declination lead to central chambers either for the purpose of mystery or sepulture in the mexican pyramids as well as the egyptian quite enough has been said to prove the architectural identity it is fair to infer that tribes of the same architectural family built both okay again it is fair to infer that tribes of the same architectural family built both in that case they would be contemporaneous but the evidences of the same affinity or identity multiply as we proceed so he just said that means they would be living or uh, of the same time at least okay so he didn't say egypt is older he's saying this this is basically concluding that they were at least around the same time because they have the same kind of technology uh structures architecture uh you know language the hieroglyphic system everything all right so but we know this is older over here all right so because remember his hijack from what he thinks is the is the truth is that the old world's on that side so his perspective and orientation is different than ours i think honestly speaking that the majority of archaeologists who held to that old model that has now been completely discredited honestly believed what they were saying to be true they felt that that's what the evidence said and then their careers became connected to that idea and they became very reluctant to accept any idea that threatened that and i think it's more that natural territoriality of human beings rather than a deliberate attempt to hide the truth of the past from us but the effect has been as overwhelming or worse than a deliberate attempt to cover up the past because a hundred thousand years of the human story has just been completely shut down until now it's called queen mu and the egyptian sphinx by augustus le plongeon md the learned wranglers on this shadowy and dim point forget that all leading geologists now agree in the opinion that america is the oldest known continent on the face of the planet all right boom that came out of nowhere right but we've already read and heard who louis agassiz the most renowned geologist tell us that america is the first land is the true old world all right and what is augustus telling us right that all the leading geologists now agree not just one all the leading geologists now agree in the opinion that america is the oldest known continent on the face of the planet that the fossil remains of human beings found in various parts of it far distant from each other prove that man lived there in times immemorial and that we have half and that we have not the slightest ray of light to illumine the darkness that surrounds the origin of those primeval men all right we got in the past videos right how they're finding human bones in these deep layers right they're supposed to be millions of years old right all right so at this time all geologists knew this was the real old this continent the oldest known continent on the face of the planet plain furthermore it is now admitted by the generality of scientists that man far from descending from a single pair located in a particular portion of earth's surface has appeared on every part of it where the biological conditions have been propitious to his development and maintenance all right he's telling you not just in africa no out of africa theories here again he told you in the beginning of this book this ain't about theory the maya sages doubtless has reached similar conclusions 
since they call their country Mayak. That is the land first emerged from the bottom of the deep. All right, the Maya, they knew this was the oldest land, Mayak, right? We got Agassiz, right? Louis Agassiz who told us this is the first land out of the primordial waters. All right, now the Maya, they call their country Mayak. That is the land first emerged from the bottom of the deep. And we read in Genesis, right? Let there be land. Let the waters subside. Let the land show. And there was land. The first land, America. The country of the Shu. And the Egyptians, according to Herodotus, boosted that their ancestors in the lands of the West, all right, were the oldest men on earth. All right, quote Herodotus. Go research that. He's telling you that the Egyptians, their ancestors in the lands of the West. So if you're in Africa, America's to the West were the oldest men on earth. There were long periods when the Americas were cut off from the rest of the world, cut off from the conflicts and the difficulties going on in the so-called old world. What a beautiful and amazing place for a civilization to evolve, a civilization that was separate, that was different, that had its own way of doing things. Uh, that, is, that is one of the reasons why I think we need to take America very, very seriously, because we now know that the archaeological story we've been taught about the Americas is complete and utter bullshit, complete and utter bullshit. Queen Mu and the Egyptian Sphinx by Augustus Le Flongeon. It is to the monumental inscriptions and to the books of the Mayas that we must turn if we wish to learn about the primeval traditions of mankind, all right, the Mayas, the development of civilization, and the events that took place centuries before the dim myths recorded as occurrences at the beginning of our written history. Historians, when writing on the universal history of the race, have never taken into consideration that of man in America, okay? Like Graham Hancock told you, there was a doctrine, a dogma. And historians, when they were talking about the universal history of the race, of the human race, they never took into consideration that of man in America and the role that in remote ages American nations played on this world stage. The importance, what we did, what we provided, have you not read? the American Indian contributions to the world encyclopedia. Have you not read that? How important and what influence we had and what we, you know, the role we played in the world stage. Again, and the influence they exerted over the populations of Asia, Africa, and Europe. All right, Amaru Khans, Amaru priest kings, priest kings. The Amaru priest kings, the role they played on the world stage and the influence they exerted over the populations of Asia, Africa, and Europe, still as far as we can scan the long vista of the past centuries, the Mayas seem to have had direct and intimate communications with them. This fact is indeed no new revelation as proved by the universality of the name Maya which seems to have been as well known by all civilized nations thousands of years ago as is today that of the English. Thus, we meet with it in Japan, the islands of the Pacific, Hindustan. Now remember Hindustan, that's the real name of India. Okay, Asia Minor, Egypt, Greece, Equatorial Africa, North and South America as well as in the countries known to us as Central America, which in those times composed the Maya Empire. All right, all of Central America. Wherever found the name Maya is synonymous with power, wisdom, and learning, all right? Wherever you're going to hear or see this word, Maya, it is synonymous with power, wisdom, and learning.